what is up. So today we are making one of my favorite things in the whole world, which is chicken and pasta. We are making chicken and pasta. We are doing a copycat version of the Cheesecake Factory Louisiana chicken pasta. I've actually never had Louisiana chicken pasta at Cheesecake Factory, but the recipe I am following, I'll link it below. Looked really, really delicious. It had a lot of heavy whipping cream, a lot of veggies, a lot of like seasoning, peppers. So I thought it'd be really fun to try and make it. As you guys know, we had a little bit of a traumatic experience at Cheesecake Factory, like maybe like five months ago, and we never went back since. And we used to eat there like literally three times a week. So uh, yeah, uh, it wasn't that traumatic actually. There's just like a little piece of like plastic in my husband's mashed potatoes. And there's like a hard plastic. And they're like, oh yeah, that happened earlier today. And I was like, why don't you just pull the potato? So we never really went there again. It wasn't their fault like that happens, but we're gonna try and make this duplicate recipe at home. It looks pretty simple. Um, I'm doing my own little uh, fried chicken. I keep calling it chinsel. Like my own little fried chicken spin on it. So if you want to see how I make the fried chicken, it's how I've been making it in almost all my videos. We kind of nailed it to perfection. She makes it a different way. Hers looks really delicious too. She puts like cheese and milk in hers. I'm just using egg and flour and panko. But yeah, I'm going to follow her sauce recipe and I love making sauces. So let's get started. I'm putting my pan medium heat. Um, and this is the noodles we're using. We're using like bow tie right here. And my water is boiling, so I'm gonna actually put this in. Um, while it's boiling, it's gonna cook a little bit in with the sauce so we can take it out early. But I'm gonna go ahead and throw this into the water now. To start over here, we are going to melt our butter. We always have like the perfect amount of butter left, I feel. Um, so I just always measure with my heart on butter. <laughs> I think that's the best way to go. We love butter, especially with pasta. So I'm gonna get that all nice and melty into this pot. And then we're gonna add some yellow pepper, red pepper, and I'm going to throw in some red peppers and yellow peppers. And then also we're gonna throw in our red onion. I actually prefer red onion over white onion lately, but this is what the recipe calls for, so we are Putting in the red, and we are going to mix this all together. I think she also added mushrooms in hers. I can't do mushrooms, so we're gonna mix this all together for four to five minutes. And really just let it emulsify as the basis of our, of our sauce. Now we are going to add in our garlic and crushed red pepper, if you like it spicy. We're gonna just do a little bit because there is a lot of flavors here. Just do a little bit. And then we're gonna mix this all together for two minutes before we add all our juices. So we're gonna keep stirring so the garlic doesn't burn. So that's a couple minutes, then we are going to add one cup of chicken broth. And then we she does about a pint and a quarter. I have like a perfect pint right here. So I'm gonna just do a pint of heavy whipping cream, which she actually ends up thickening, her, thickening hers up with cornstarch after, so I think a little less wicked is good. And then we are going to let this come to a simmer, she said about six to eight minutes. So I'm gonna just kind of stir it around and then kind of let it come to, I call it a boil, they keep calling it simmer, but. After it's been brought to a simmer for like five minutes because we want to get it thick. My problem is always like I'm so impatient. I just like throw all the ingredients in. Then we're going to add cheese. She adds basil once again. We're not basil people, <laughs> so we're not adding it. So we're going to put the cheese and then also some salt and pepper. Um, I love when there's cheese in like a sauce like this. I think it's so good. And then we're going to have some Cajun seasoning, which... I guess because of that Louisiana, I love, Cajun, I love Cajun seasoning so much, like seriously, like use this for everything. She uses quite a bit. Usually everything's like a tablespoon, she uses like three tablespoons, but once again, I'm gonna measure. I think this is gonna give some seasoning. I'm not gonna measure, I'm measuring with my heart. But I've used this for the mac and cheese and our, and our chicken before and it was so good. And then we're going to salt. And we are going to pepper. It looks and smells amazing already. And then we are going to stir that up. Mm. And then it'll thicken again. So I'm gonna just make sure all the cheese is mixed up in there. All the seasoning. 
yum, yum, yum. And then we are going to let this come to a boil and a simmer for 10 minutes. So while this is going for 10 minutes, our pasta, our bow tie pasta is out. She said you could let that cool down because we'll throw that in um, after this comes to a simmer. So that's all mixed up. We are going to put that on medium. And while that's going, we have our oil started over here. So let's set up the chicken station. I think if you've seen my videos, you've seen this a bunch of times. So if you already know how I do it, just you know, go ahead and skip this part. But we're doing our schnitzel, or sorry, my husband calls it schnitzel. I call it like we fried chicken, but um, a little different. So it's, it's really not that complicated. It's flour, which is salt and pepper in there. We have some egg mixed up and our chicken. And then we just like love the way this chicken cooks. Like we just make this sometimes on its own. So it's super, super simple. And yeah, I'll just show you how we cook it. So take a piece of chicken right here, okay? You put it in the flour and just make sure it's like super coated. Again, she's doing hers really different. Like she's not frying it deep fried. She's kind of doing like a medium fry. Um, she has much cheese in hers and milk. It looks good, but we are so like obsessed with this method. Then you really, really want to coat it in the egg wash. That's kind of the secret to like um, this kind of chicken because when it's really well coated, it's like mmm. So crispy, so well done. So this is like our own version. Again, we use this like when we do chicken parm. We use this if we just wanna make regular fried chicken. And then once it's like heavily coated, we flop it in here. And then, oh, so usually I use my dry hand. I was using my wet hand for this. And I just kind of like really make sure it's like covered. Because when it's not covered enough, and again, hers isn't super covered and it still looks good. When it's not covered enough though, I don't know, it just like doesn't hit the same. So then we flop it over, kind of do the same thing. Just making sure it's all covered in its glory. And then you kind of just shake off what shakes off. And then you rinse and repeat. So with the dry hand, I put it in the flour. Really, really. Make sure it's coated every piece, every inch. Put it in the egg wash. Really egg wash it up. It's my wet hand. And then we put it on over to our panko. And that's it. And like I said, like you can use this for literally fettuccine, chicken parm, chicken and mashed potatoes. It's just kind of our go-to. So if you like thin, crispy chicken, it's better than, you know, I'm a chicken finger queen. This is the best chicken ever. Which is why I can't go out to restaurants anymore because I seriously cook it better than every restaurant out there. And then yeah, okay, we got a little egg here that now it has been simmering for about 10 minutes we're doing some fried chicken over here we are going to add in our bow tie pasta so bring it down to low and our bow tie pasta has been kind of chilling which she said was fine if it was chilling so we're going to add it to here all right and this bow tie pasta smells absolutely amazing it's on low but hey you know Put this over here. I'm gonna scoop it on in. Let's see if we can. This instead. Ah, oh, there we go. All right, here we go. We haven't made bow tie pasta. I don't think ever. I can't remember the last time we made bow tie pasta. Double teaming because we want the chicken to be hot with our pasta. Try that out, and we can always add more. Let's see how that folds in with the sauce. Mm. 
Neither one of us has had the Cajun chicken pasta. Yeah, no, the Louisiana chicken pasta. So we really don't know, but honestly, like I like this color sauce. She uses, she does use something for coloring to make it like yellow. She used like Cezanne or something. I literally had no idea what that was. So I'm not using that, but again, we're all about the taste and the veggies and everything mixed in and everything mixed in with like Parmesan cheese. I think this would actually use a little some more of this pasta. Bow tie pasta for the win. All right, so that's about the whole box. Yeah, everything should be done at the same time, which is great. But she did put her pasta on low. We did that the other day when we had a little mishap. We put it on low and it still was super, super hot. So just trying to get all the sauce from the bottom to come on top. So the coloring is a little different than hers, but again, I need to know she said she added something for specific coloring. So I'm not too worried. This is really just looks like buttery, cheesy pasta with some, some pepper and some cream. So we love that too. All right. And even if the sauce is on the bottom, we can pour it on top of these noodles. That's an extra, but yeah, this is a good pot cooking. All right, let's plate it up. Guys, here is a close-up. Looks so delicious. I mean, I'm a chicken and pasta kind of person, so if you are too, let's see how this tastes. Taste test. We got our chicken and pasta. We know the chicken's gonna be bomb because we make it the bombest chicken ever. But let's try out this pasta. Have you ever had it before at Cheesecake Factory? No. Me neither. I don't know why. Yeah, <laughs> plastic shred. <laughs> a shredded it. plastic. It wasn't even shredded. It was like a chunk of plastic. Mmm. Mmm. Interesting. It is like a cheesy pasta, like a cheesy fettuccine. It's not heavy. It's kind of light. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, I love peppers. Vegetables. Whatever peppers mm -hmm. are cooked in something, it's always good. I was just going to say, it kind of gets like a jambalaya. Because it has the Cajun seasoning with the peppers. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I love this pasta sauce, actually. I knew I would. It just looks really good with all the ingredients. One mm. thing I'm surprised, I like the bow tie pasta. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Me too. I've never had it before. I don't think I've ever cooked it with anything. It's nice to chew it. Mm hmm. No, that was really, oh yeah, I like this. I love it. I love it with the pepper. It's really good. Mmm. Well, it's nice because the recipe was like, you had to cook the vegetables in the sauce for like five minutes. together, 15 mm -hmm. minutes mm -hmm. or so. And it's so much better because usually the vegetables are raw and that's just not tasty. Right. <laughs> that's me usually. Usually I just, I'm like rushing it so much, but. No, I mean, I didn't mean you, I meant more. You know, we talked about like Benihana, how they they don't cook the zucchinis. Right. You just have them for a second or... And then you get them. Yeah, so usually, usually vegetables are not like well cooked. Yeah, this one you really, like the whole sauce, I thought it was going to be a lot quicker, but in a way, like it was really easy. But you just let it sit for a while. Like each thing was like two minutes cook this, five minutes cook this, ten That's minutes really simmer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. With that chicken... Mm, 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 mm. Mm. These chickens are our best things ever that we make. It's like a different version of uh, chicken farm. Yeah, I think that's why I love it. Like chicken and pasta. It's better than chicken farm, I think. It's not as heavy. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm. I wish I could just memorize sauces, how to make them. Because it's kind of reminds me of that Cajun chicken pasta we made too. But I just don't know like the steps. So there's there's a lot of steps. But at some point you won't need to. You just no, kind of I improvise, like you know. But yeah, like this started with butter, vegetables, onions. And then we just put garlic, red pepper, heavy whipping cream. Oh, this had chicken broth in it too, which I thought was mm. different. 
It said chicken broth. Um, what does chicken broth even do? Make it's flavor. instead of water, it's more. It's like, you know how we cook the chicken in the sauce? Mm -hmm. It gives the sauce flavor because mm. there's fluids coming out of it. So here you have water. It says if you did that. So yeah. You cook the chicken in the sauce. Oh, that's what it tastes like. Oh my God, it's so good. Okay, this is one of my favorite things I've made in a while. I just love pasta and chicken. I just love, love, love this combo. But like I said, it's kind of light. It's like not too heavy. She did use mushroom and basil in hers too, but I just, you know, it's a little extra for me. Do you like mushroom and basil? Mm. Not basil. I like mushrooms, but something, like this is perfect the way it is. Mm -hmm. I don't see adding anything else to it. Definitely not basil. No. Because then we just take over the flavor. Mm-hmm. This would be called pepper pasta. Chicken pepper pasta. It kind of has a Cajun though. It's called Louisiana chicken pasta. But I would call it more Cajun chicken pasta because it's kind of, because it has the Cajun seasoning. But yeah, it could just be a pepper. Pepper fettuccine. <laughs> spicy fettuccine. I don't know. Because it's not too spicy either, so it's kind of hard no, to... so it's a Cajun pepper. <laughs> Louisiana chicken pasta. <laughs> Which is a fun name anyways unto itself. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we finally finished Stranger Things 4. I started on season 4. You watched season 1. We did not watch seasons 2 or 3. We could. <laughs> mm -mm, mm. There's no way because like the only thing that kind of kept me interested in this were Vecna and Eddie. And those are two new characters. Everyone else, I don't know if they were more interesting in the first season. But like I thought Hopper and, um, and Renona Ryder, I thought they were like bigger characters. And their storyline was so boring to me. And I liked both of them as actors. Like I love Renona Ryder. I don't really, I didn't know the guy, but I liked his look. I liked his style. I just thought their storyline was just awful. Yeah, so if you didn't watch, spoilers. Oh yeah? <laughs> no, we Spoil. haven't spoiled anything yet. So okay. <laughs> if you didn't watch the finale of oh, yeah. season four, which probably all of you have. We just catching up. We're with so it. behind always. Like everyone was talking about Stranger Things so long. We started because of ASMR. Everyone's like, you should do Stranger Things. But I'm like, I don't even know who I'd be on that. Well, like it's, it's, I feel bad because I had such high hopes for the show. Mm -hmm. Especially if, like for you to watch it and then. It did get good. Like I got into it for a minute and the finale was just. The show is like this. It's. Mm -hmm. Mm. So instead of going like up, 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 it, it started slow, went up, and then it crashed and ended. But no, I think the no... opposite. The first episode was crazy. That was like the slasher film where she was like, that's the Chrissy wake up. Like all of a sudden, it's like everything's happening. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it dropped really dramatically. And then, yeah, there was no buildup. And then again, it spiked up again with Vecna being one. And then it like spiked out again. To me, it was like, whoo, whoo. <laughs> like it was so weird I mean like how good the show is the show was just like cause they had so many different storylines yeah I thought two episodes ago that we probably have at least five more episodes to get them all together to get the storylines to weave together <laughs> yeah. to finally make sense and it never did and then it just didn't seem cohesive. In the last season, it's just like everything. Everyone were fighting from afar, and you didn't really feel how they were connected and how it affected each other, especially the ones in Russia. <laughs> I mean, that was just because you didn't even feel it. You know, mm -hmm. like as they were killing those monsters over there, how it affected. How did it that. affect it? I still don't understand that. So conceptually like as far as the philosophy of it all of those creatures and Vecna they're all one creature they're all connected the bats those monsters him the like, bats were from another season then probably but I didn't get it I didn't get the bats at all but all of those things those roots going through the houses everything was Vecna like everything was connected but this is the first season of Vecna that we see him right mm -hmm. so you're saying all these demons before like they all had that con they all were him they all were one there's this black smoke, which again, they didn't even go through, it didn't explain. Okay, lost. <laughs> the black smoke is what connects all of them together. Oh. Um. So, you, when, like in Russia, they saw the black smoke in like an mm -hmm. aquarium, and mm -hmm. then after that, they told them... Wait, they that, did? 
the black smoke went into the monsters. I'm like, oh, what okay. What aquarium? Where was I? I mean, it was kind of a portal. They saw this black smoke captured inside of a thing. I don't even remember that. Russia was like, I'm so confused. It dragged on. Let us know because we don't know how they, how he ended up in Russia. My sister, or some other people have told me like season three, the one before this, was all took place in a mall and like Hopper saved people from a fire. They thought he died in it. So I'm like, okay, so he wasn't in Russia, but he must have been. How did he get to Russia? So you guys can tell us because we don't know. <laughs> Maybe we should have watched the first few seasons. But the finale was just so disappointing. Oh my god. Anticlimactic. Nothing, like you said, nothing really happened. Well, you made a good point with the fade to the fade to black when like something big was about to happen. They just like cut to black and like that was it. I was like, what the heck? Like, like Eleven was finally got off of her chains and was gonna fight Vecna. <laughs> and then went to black. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly we come back with Vecna just flying in the air. Like, why wouldn't you show her like <laughs> bursting energy? Ripping him off of what's her name, Sam? Sam Max. Max. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ripping him off of Max. Yeah. And like they don't, you don't even see that. And they were capable of it because they did crazy stuff like that, like in the asylum and stuff. Like they were doing crazy stuff. So I was like, why would you not show that? Um, then the power of love. When what power of love? Who want? Who got? Isn't it? Was it Mike? That told one that he loves her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then... I mean, that was kind of weird, too. Like, okay. And know. then I was just like, okay, I'll fight now. <laughs> well, you know, that's the boost. He's the heart, as they said in the show, mm -hmm. and the power of love. And I get that symbolically, and you want to push that, but... Come on. I know. I didn't... Uh, again, I haven't seen the first few seasons, but... I knew those were the main characters, and I was kind of like, oh, I'm surprised that they don't have a bigger part. Like, to me, the main characters were the people at Hawkins. Mm -hmm. Like, Nancy, Steve... <laughs> Dust, Dustin and Eddie and the and the jocks. Oh, and um, oh, I forgot the the basketball player and his sister. I forgot her, their names. Will um, I can't think of their names. But those are like the main people. And Max. And the worst part. Why did Eddie have to die? Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> why? I don't know. I guess they thought it was like a new character just to kill him off. Like the whole thing was to prove his innocence. Yeah. So at the end, he should have come back with people accepting the <laughs> fact that he was innocent. He didn't save anyone by dying. Not at all. Not even close. Like, like, the, whole, the only thing he did was like for the first time in his life, not life, not run away, and then he died. <laughs> right. I'm like, well, you were right to run away before. Yeah. So you were. <laughs> how you stayed alive. And he said that he's like, look at us, we're not heroes, and they were fine with it. Dustin was fine with it. That's their characters. <laughs> Steve what? wasn't any better. Steve just, he like flopped right away. <laughs> he was going to go be the hero and then they just got him. I was like, okay. Why? Because anyway, when <laughs> when they killed the monsters in Russia and Vecna was defeated, all those bats just fell to the ground and died. Yeah. So why did Eddie have to die? Like, I, I know. <laughs> like no, nobody was affected by this. Nobody bats. was even in danger for it. He just went back out. I was like, okay, he distracted the bats. He did good with his guitar playing and that was cool. And then that was it. That was his job. <laughs> and then he... It was... <clears throat> no, it was not necessary. He should have stayed. I just Especially come back. when there's like another season. What I've been seeing in interviews is like he will come back. Hmm. That and I will come back. Because everyone loved him so much. So in this kind of show... It's like you can bring people back. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, not cool. I am. Um, it was kind of like, oh, this one actually looks really good. I love the crispy ones down here. But also, like, it didn't, like, the ending was not an ending. It was just, like, to be continued. There's another season. Mm -hmm. We didn't defeat him. We didn't do anything. He, he actually won. I know. Like, it, it popped four times and... The city was torn apart. I don't know. I am. Um, I was glad about it. So season four is actually just a preparation for season five. Well, they should have already made season five so you can watch it, you know, back to back. Mm. But they'll have to have a new monster, right? No, I think they're going to fight him again. I gotta get this eyelash. It's like bugging me. It was like half off. Me too. Mm -hmm. End of the night. <laughs> mm. What, do I look crazy now? No. Oh, I know, huh? No. The lights are bright, so I look pale. 
I would love to be in Stranger Things four, 5, just putting it out there. I could be like a teacher, a monster. That should just be like your modern family, just kind of <laughs> fucking around. Oh! Taking a selfie. My role in modern family? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'll reprise it. Did you ever see it? It was me or you looked it up? It came up so many times. Really? Like, on YouTube. like <laughs> All your roles in mm. TV shows. I know when I think about like how many roles I actually got, like just off Ellie casting your photos, I was like, God, I kind of like got a lot. I mean, they're like background roles, but. It's not the small thing. Yeah. I kind of miss it. Like when I think about it, I'm like, oh, that's kind of a fun time in life. Like I don't think I would do it now, obviously, but. I was excited. I wish I would have appreciated it more back then. How about you? When you did like, did you appreciate it at the time, or were you kind of like, yeah? I don't think I appreciate it because I just wanted to be the star. I wanted to get paid a lot, so I wasn't really appreciating like how fun it was. But I did not get paid. <laughs> right, because I mean, it's good you had that set to find. Because if you were satisfied with it, you wouldn't do anything else. I know. Did you ever do background work? I know I've asked you this before, but I don't think you did. No, I only played. Jesus, <laughs> because people on set. Would have, they were doing this for like 20 years. Like they were doing shows in the 80s. Like they were doing like professional background actors. And they were so content with it. They would bring their books. Like they knew what to do. And like I think it's good. I would have kept doing it. But like they treated you really like bad. Like they would always like yell at you. I don't know if it's like that anymore. But PAs would always yell at you to get going. Or don't sleep. Or you can't eat this. Can't go to the bathroom. And I was just like I didn't like the way they treated you. But other than that. The set was fun. My experience was like each production was so different. Really? And it was so dependent on the crew, like who they hired. Because mm -hmm. usually oh, they yeah. hire like, like there's one person that gets his people into it. So it's like all the crew, all the people working. Mm -hmm. And whoever these people are, if they're nice, everything is nice. If they're like nasty and on edge, everyone is nasty yeah, and on edge. Yeah, that's so true. Did you have a bad one? Did you have a bad experience? Because I feel mm -hmm. like all you, you did? No, I mean... I feel like all yours was good. Mine, like, because I was the star, but... <laughs> you were Jesus. So, who's going to scream at Jesus? I could have been background in one of your shoots, and then... I disciple. Hmm. Are we having one? You should have been the one in Christ Cologne. Oh, my God. I would have, like, worked it because I knew him at the time. That would have been so funny. That's the one. I would have given me a dumb feeling, though. Because, like, those kind of shoots, I'd always be like, oh, my God, I'm just, like... Cringe. I mean, you were good in it. It was. That was the purpose of it. I mean, I would never do totally sketch love him, but whenever I did totally sketch stuff, I was always like cringing. I'm like, mm. he was so popular though. But he's like still directing. I looked. I don't know. I saw him on like Instagram, but he's like still directing and like making stuff for people. He must get paid because he's not doing social media, so he must be paid for it, which is cool. Yeah, I mean, he's a good director. Michael Gallagher, shout out. Loved him. What was your worst experience? Hmm. Worst one was... A shoot that was supposed to be 8 hours became 16 hours. Oh no! It was like, instead of 8 hours, you came ready for 8 hours. And I think we were supposed to be done like around 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. At 8 hours to that, it was like 6 in the morning. Mm -hmm. It was freezing cold, and we were like wearing those, you know, like thin gowns that you wear in the Bible. It was like freezing cold. We didn't know where we were gonna be down. We didn't know where we were gonna leave. It was just, and because also because they weren't prepared, so it was like food, accommodations, things, bathrooms, like nothing was really. Where were proper. you? We were on a set, like not far from, like. Further up north, they have a whole set of like biblical times. Really? Have you ever been there? Mm -mm. It looks like a scene from like Iraq and Middle East and mm. like ruins of old buildings That's really from cool. the Bible or something. Well, I love 16 hour shoots because it was overtime. Maybe they didn't pay you overtime, but you'd get double we didn't per have hour. That. Um, so it was like a non-union shoot. It was kind of a flat fee. Oh, that wouldn't be cool then. But if you do like a TV show, like they'll pay you like time and a half every hour. 
which is like crazy. So if you're getting like sixty-four dollars for the day, they would give you like hundred and twenty dollars per hour you went over. I would be happy with that. But. Mm-hmm. I loved it until I didn't. But <laughs> if you're cold too, and like if you're doing it kind of just for the fun of it, which I feel like you were doing, like it's like not fun anymore. Yeah, and everyone else was just miserable. It makes a difference. I like all my music videos. I always use the same crew because if they're upbeat, I'm upbeat. At the beginning, it was rough. Like, I'd find some negative Nancys on set, and then they can't come back anymore. I do not like the vibe. Like, everyone has to have good vibes. Be careful. <laughs> I bend it over, but my belly. <laughs> it's huge. Today, I was taking pictures. I was like, oh, my God. My belly is really damn big. It's literally a balloon. <laughs> oh, this is it. No, I'm Just as big as it gets. I don't know. <laughs> I'm scared. I still have a couple weeks, technically. Yeah, but I think now it's going to slow down. I don't know. Oh, man. We're running out of time, though, for videos. Like, I still have a whole list of videos I want to do. But now I meditate in the morning, and I come to the realization that, like, they'll get done or they won't get done. And it really doesn't matter because I'm not really, none of it's sponsored, none of it's on timeline. Like, <laughs> I'm under. The guys now just what gets done gets done, exactly. and that's it. As long as our baby's fed and she got a place to sleep, check and check. So what are we watching tonight? I don't know. Glee. <laughs> it's the feeler in between. Yeah, I was like, Married at First Sight is kind of long to start right now. And that's more of a Saturday night pizza night show. <laughs> mm. What else? We, I guess it was like a filler. We watched Claim to Fame this week. This one's fun. Mm-hmm. I like it. That's almost over too. I'm getting down to the wire. Mm. I haven't had a food coma. I could honestly go to sleep right now. <laughs> this kind of meal is like my favorite kind of meal, like pasta and chicken. Mm. That's so good. I mean, I love our rice and stuff too, but. I definitely will finish this chicken. Mm-hmm. Okay. Rating, what would you rate this dinner? It's perfect. I, mean, it's... <laughs> I just saw one comment today that was, it wasn't even negative. Trust me, I'm not complaining of talking about negative things anymore, but this one was funny. It was like, I'm tired of Moses saying it's perfect every meal. <laughs> I'm like, sorry he likes my cooking. I mean, we cook the dishes we really want to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is true. Mm-hmm. And, no, but I've been honest about it. There were meals that were like seven and eight. and. But there's some mac and cheese ones for sure that you were like, mm. <laughs> But this was really good, really good sauce. I ate until I was like full. Mm-hmm. I want to eat more, so I'm probably... You also brought cheese fries home for me at 2.30, so... That was like yesterday. We were doing a lot. I've been feeling so good about the content, too, this week. I've been feeling so good. Some good stuff coming. You've been I have, like, so hard. between 6 and 10 videos that I have to edit. I can't wait to see. If you guys want to see Moses' vlogs, like... I think he'll take over that our family channel. It'll be more Hatman family channel, because, like, he was opening up all this baby stuff... I was getting overwhelmed. I was trying to unbox things. I was like, I can't. I'm like getting overwhelmed. So I'm so I'm excited to watch them. Because you show up, everything is assembled, ready to go. <laughs> it's really so perfect. Really like chairs and toys and <laughs> furniture and things. I come home and I see the little baby chair there. I'm like, oh my god, little baby. <laughs> cute stuff. It's so cute. I can't wait to see everything. Can't wait to show you guys everything. It's all happening. The nursery. Look at the little side dish. They can't see your little side hustle over there. Well, I ended up not even eating it. You didn't? Yeah. No. Oh. Just for good. You had a little hummus over there. Sometimes I like the schnitzel. Just a little <laughs> dab. In <And> hummus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that the... I don't even know how you do it. I remember when people did it and I was like, I don't even know how you do it. That was a time in my social media life where I wasn't like up on the trends. I don't know what I was doing. I must have been like on drugs then. Like I just don't remember that era where people like did the dab. Kind of like the Jake Ball Team 10. Like I kind of remember but it was all like a blur. Like I don't, I know it was like a big thing. Did you know about it? Mm-hmm. It was all around the same time. 
I, I just, that, I checked out at that point. I'm like, I don't remember most of that phase. Because he was big. He was pretty massive. I was like... Yeah, but the audience was what? The kids? Like the... I remember going to his house in the top houses and it was like a fortress. Like he had like this huge mansion. Like, like Logan's house was pretty like low-key. I mean, it was nice. It was beautiful. But like, Jake's was like crazy. They did so good. I'm just still in awe. You know, some people you're just like crazy because you know they start out like little punk kids and then you're just like wow they like yeah they got the <laughs> work ethics and the talent probably like the right management people to help them no but i think logan works hard he just works yeah hard. i mean jake too though because he's doing like madison for garden and all these fights i'm like can't even come up with it i just don't know any other i just i guess i'm in awe of it because i just don't know any other influencers that are like that that like make that are mainstream they make noise they make money like Right, the crossover to the mainstream. I don't know. I mean, Miranda seemed like the yeah the show, the shows, the live shows and the show. Was it Hulu or Netflix? Netflix, she had two seasons. That was a big so that's, deal. That's like mainstream. And she had like a comedy special on Netflix. Yeah. No, she's definitely mainstream for sure. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I really can't think of someone else. Uh, like, I don't know. Maybe in different ways, more like businesses, you know, people ventured into certain businesses right but I guess more just like like Mr. Beast for instance like I feel like he's so massive but like I just don't like my dad wouldn't know Mr. Beast but my dad knows like the Paul brothers but he might he might because like Jimmy Fountain like he is mainstream now Mr. Beast he might but he doesn't like do TV or anything he just does YouTube right but it's been treated by mainstream like TV like his stuff he's on stuff so maybe they tried with Lily Singh and not knocking her. I just feel like they put her in the wrong stuff. Because she, she, she was trying. She got, like, her own late night. We never really hear about her anymore. Again, not, not to knock her. She's probably, like, so successful. But, like. But probably the wrong wrong hour and wrong type of show. Because mm -hmm. that's the problem. They're in control and not she. So, that's why people don't. Why go to TV if you're not going to do what you want to do? That's true. Emma Chamberlain's kind of big. She models for, like, Louis Vuitton. She does the Met Gala. Can we have her coffee or something? Yeah. I like good. her now. <laughs> I told her that. One day I went coffee and I was like, oh, there's coffee here. Okay, team my coffee sponsorship. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right. Did you see Spotify? My mom was telling me Megan Markle got like $30 million for Spotify for a podcast and she beat Joe Rogan for the number one. Even, what would she even talk about? <laughs> I don't know. It's so random, though. That's a waste of money. <laughs> well, apparently not. It's number one over Joe Rogan. For a minute, I don't see it. Right. <laughs> you and my mom are the same. She was like, I don't know what she's going to talk about. I was like, okay, hey, haters over here. <laughs> no, we're just like... No, I know. I get the same way. I don't even know. First of all, I didn't I had to think of who it was. And then I was like, oh. That's what I mean. It's like, I mean, people are obsessed with the royal family. But they're not in it anymore, so people... Right, so I mean, people are just probably tuning in to hear whatever she can give as far as her testimony of that world and life. Yeah. Can okay. she, yeah. I don't know if she's going to say it. But pretty good deal for her. I'll good take job. it. <laughs> Is he going to be on it with her? No. I mean, that's not part of the deal, but maybe they're hoping that. Because I would tune into that, like a royal couple, or an ex-royal <laughs> couple... And they're probably like hoping he'll do that. I feel like a lot of times that happens, like the spouses of someone like super famous gets a show because they're hoping to like oh, join so in a in. way they can afford her but not him. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Cause you always see that on like those um, reality shows. Like they'll get like the the spouse that's not as popular, but then the spouse that's like popular comes in. Like That's happens to me. People can always invite <laughs> me to a podcast. <laughs> Sorry, not as popular. <laughs> <laughs> no. They try to get, because they can't get you, they try to get me. <laughs> and I was like, um, no, I know you actually... <laughs> oh, yeah, there was, a, there was a couple that were like that. Well, you should. Well, maybe when you have stuff to, like, like promote, like, your book and stuff. Yeah, then I'd be, like, shameless about it. Yeah. Like me too. I feel like I would do more podcasts if I had something to promote, but, like, people ask me to go on their podcast, and I'm kind of like, what am I going to talk about? Because I don't want to talk about drama. I want to talk about having a baby. <laughs> 
Yeah. And I've been on podcasts that are of my interest, but they're, you know, small and niche. It's like talking about spirituality, consciousness, Is stuff like that. Is this because you like it? Yeah, so that's something I enjoy to talk about, but I'm not somebody to talk about mainstream stuff. Yeah, I don't feel like that either. I would go on the the Friendship Onion one, the one with the Lord of the Rings guys, Dominic Monaghan. You can go on any podcast and talk to anyone. Yeah, but like I feel like There's they wouldn't care about fun. like YouTube stuff. Like they wouldn't ask. But you don't need to. Like, well, I'm saying it's funny and entertaining. No, but I've been I've been asked to be on a couple podcasts, and I, I know they just want to talk about like n- like BFFs. They've asked me to be on them again, and I'm just like, okay, but like that's all drama. I don't want to talk about like YouTube drama because it just also doesn't interest me, and I also just like don't care, and I'm also like, what am I going to answer that? I'm all about positivity, so I just be like, be nice to them. <laughs> but now they might ask you about being a mom. I don't think being pregnant. Yeah, I'm scared about me being a mom. Um, maybe a momming podcast or something. I don't know. But even that feels weird. A couple of people have inter- asked me to interview before, like giving birth. I'm like, oh, like I don't know. I just want to give birth. I don't know. I really want to. So let me tell you about my pregnancy. You can see it on my YouTube channel. I don't know. Sure, but that's where. You plug in your channel there. <laughs> what? I'm an ASM artist, actually, so I'll just totally talk about that. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it's been a long... It hasn't been a long day, but it's been a long day now. After we cook, I'm like... <sighs> That'd be funny if you show up to somebody else's podcast with nails and just start tapping on things. Like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm just used to tapping on I do that on my regular like, <laughs> Q&A. I'm always clapping my nails. <laughs> I do that. I don't know why, because I just... Well, people do that. I mean, I remember from the beginning of time. What? People just tapping their nails. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen anyone just go... In kind of an aggressive way. I love... I miss, I, I will miss having long nails. Remember when I used to get them done? I, will miss have, I won't have those for a very long time because we're planning on having babies and diapers for the next six to seven years. But we've got a good system going. Come yeah. On. The press... No, they're great. The press ones are great. You did so good at the bug set. Guys, go watch my behind-the-scenes vlog channel. Moses said bugs on a microphone for me, and honestly, like I'm, so, I'm always so impressed at your artistic ability. I know that sounds like stupid, or I'm being patronizing, but it's actually like really impressive, like setting up I sets. Mean, this one is not. I don't know anyone that would actually like understand how those ideas come about in the ASMR world. Like picking bugs out of a microphone. Like, okay, I guess that's what we're doing now. And I think so we amped like, it up with the with the double-sided yeah. tape. I think we amped it up because I and haven't it's seen special it. special tape. It's a tape we use in furniture to like hold things forever. Yeah. So it's like a really strong tape. So the sounds and things, but it's like, how, that's why I love the ASMR world because it's a new world. Yeah. It's untapped. It's always new. It's always creative. People come up with things that... Like that woman, like, your hair is water. Oh, she's really you know, creative, like People yeah. just come up with stuff, and it was like... How? How? And then it's you so want cool. to do it, and you want to come up with Well, stuff. then we come up with things like this bug thing today with the double sided because it's like, we kind of don't know how they did it, so we're like, okay, we'll just do it this way, and it's kind of like mm-hmm. creating something new. And, it, and like, you're, my you're, role play is like, say. comedic. <laughs> How about the whole role play is just, it's fun. Only you can do that. It's really fun. I do feel like I'm pretty good at those. The ones I did today, I felt like I was pretty good at, too. I don't know. It's fun. I really do love it so much, and it's really calming and drama free, and everyone's really positive over there. And it's something we do together. Because like people who know me know that I have no production value in my videos. I didn't. I used to never have lights. Can never use a green screen, editing, all that stuff. So now it's like with all these props and sets, it's very fun. Music. Oh yeah, <laughs> the music. I still can't figure out that it's all you, but it's fun. I've been making videos since high school, so you're so good at it. It's like I love it. So, I want to do this the rest of our lives. It's just so fun. I think we will no matter what happens. I feel like we'll always just want to make creative stuff even if no one cares. Hey, we'll make a movie and put it in a Patreon. <laughs> we could. An ASMR movie. But you know what? We know someone. Well, we don't know someone. We watched someone on TikTok that made this movie and put like all his like heart, soul, money into it. And that is the worst part is like if you put all this effort into it and like nobody like watches or you're just disappointed in like how it turned out. Like the people like don't watch. It is the worst. That's the worst feeling. Like I put effort into so many things that I thought would be so big, and then when they're not, you're kind of like disappointed. Not to stop doing it, but right. But that's where the difference comes. Yeah. There's those that keep going. And those that give up. Right. Yeah, you gotta keep going. And you know what? Like, yeah, it's a disappointment. You either try it again or you do something else. You pivot. I mean, yeah. I've had so many. I mean, my last podcast was not a hit. 
Babe, <laughs> was that the goal? We just did it because we enjoy it. No, None but... of the things we do is because we enjoy it. No, that one literally I knew was nobody cared about because it, it was so... But I had fun with it. I was trying to get some people on, but nobody, nobody took the bait. <laughs> they were, well, I mean, you did one it day. passively. You didn't, like, actually be like, hey... No, I'm not that person because rejection is the worst thing ever. But hey, Naveen Andrews, if you're still out there, I want to be on my lost podcast. I'll bring it back. We'll bring it back. (laughs) We have to say it's all back though. I miss him. We need to watch something he's in. I miss him so much. Yeah, good tour. No, one of his stuff he's already been in. No, but like like Sense Eight on Netflix. Out. What was it called? Something out. The first one we saw with him. Dropout. The dropout was so good. So I think. He's gonna make new projects. They're gonna be I liked Once Upon a Time in Wonderland too. That was really good. Okay. <laughs> For me, it was. Well, that's me with Stranger Things. It's like, okay. Yeah, I agree. It ended up being. You loved it. You were like, oh, let's watch it. Let's watch it. Like, oh. Well, now you know about Becca and Eddie and. Chrissy, wake up! I don't like. Let's hear your American accent. They're both British and they did an American accent. Back now and Eddie, let's hear you do your best. I do it every day. What do you mean? Let's hear it. No. They. <laughs> no, I have to practice. You never do it. Do. They were so good. I always do the surfer. The Californian surfer. How's it go? I don't know. I was seriously impressed when like, people change their accent. When I hear them talk British and then I hear them like with them, I'm like, wow, they're so good. It's not easy. That's acting. Although, is that, it's like dialect. Isn't that cultural appropriation? Should it be? <laughs> we need to go. Be... I'm fading. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching this. 10 out of 10 for me because this was delish. Definitely. Oh, my God. I just and got so tired. We did it. Not the way the original recipe. <laughs> you know what I would love, actually, after this? No, the original recipe was good. We'll link the original. We don't know. No, I'm just saying. Look at it. It's great. You know what would be it. amazing? I could just go to bed and watch TikToks right now. I knew she was going that way. I feel like that's just like a perfect ending. Because like, we don't know really which one. Oh, do you want to watch Glee? To me, it's more the sofa, the cuddling. The sofa is just like yeah. uncomfortable now. <laughs> like, yeah, I, you know I like model positions. I don't know what it is. Like my ribs go numb. Well, I can't lean firm. back. It's probably too firm for you now. I'm just like a lump on a log. I'm just like, oh, I really can't. Like after an hour of sitting there, I'm just like, oh. yeah. Plus by the time I, I just want to do a couple dishes, by the time I clean up a little bit, wipe the counter. That's where it is. It'll be, it'll literally be nine o'clock. So unless you want to eat ice cream, I guess if we go. No, but I had sweets today. I had donuts today. I ate those chocolate donuts. They're in the fridge if you ever want those with your tea. They're pretty good. Okay. I like my fresh, oily, crispy. <laughs> Oh, I know. You don't like those. Those chocolate almonds are good. Those look great. Like a lot of those say. I think that's why it was a little much, but. Um, We'll see. I mean, first thing first. I don't think anyone can stop you from doing your dishes. No, I have to because tomorrow we're making taquitos. I just like to have like a little bit of a cleaner kitchen. And then I couldn't get the raspberry ice cream. My raspberry chocolate ice cream. That's like what I crave. I don't have it. Did we even leave the house today? (laughs) You did. You went to Shake Shack. To get quick. Yeah. I know. Oh my god, that's so weird. Yeah, next week we gotta leave the house. Tomorrow Tomorrow morning we have to go get some groceries. We'll get to that screen. We don't have any, any groceries to get. We got all the stuff for the tea. I don't have any foots in them. Oh my god, babe. What? It's really swollen. Compared to that one. Whoa, why did I do that? Oh my god, that's scary. Seriously, look at that. Dude. Ah! I don't know why that's like that. Right here, feel this right here. Oh my god, that got like really swollen out of nowhere. <gasps> oh, and that hurt too. They say that it's Babe, look at that foot compared stuff. to that foot. Well, yeah, it's a little bit salty. <gasps> I remember my mom said like salty stuff will make the feet swollen or something. But I eat salty stuff all the time. How's it this? Oh my god, that's scary. Okay, that doesn't. Oh, We're going I up to the bed. It is. You need to lift your legs up. You've been standing all day filming well, videos. Well, the past like five hours, yeah. Pretty much all day. It's standing. Sorry. So it's bedtime it is. Put a Wipe pillow, my feet down. You lift your legs up. Okay. I'll literally, like I said, I just have to do a couple. Maybe of those. no. You need to go lift your legs up. All I have to do is literally those those 
pans for the taquitos tomorrow. The ones that we wrapped the taquitos in. That's it. I'll do those. If that's I'll do the only ones. No, I'll do those. those. Give me that's 10 minutes. One. I love doing dishes. I promise, I promise I won't wear myself out. On the clock. Okay, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Yeah, okay. I gotta okay, go. Everyone get your watch out. And I actually do like the dishes. I like, I feel productive. I feel like I did everything. <laughs> productive all day. Because around the house, you do everything else. I feel like that's like one thing I contribute to that I feel special. Your feet. I mean, that's... <laughs> I felt it all of a sudden balloon up and I was like... <gasps> no, you really don't. No, you're gonna go up and put your okay. legs up. Because... It's just literally those solar pans. I'll do them. What's the problem? To the pants. Okay. All right. We well, gotta go. I gotta okay. do the dishes. <laughs> I love you so much. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's do a little awkward quiz. Where? What you said? <laughs> You're giving an awkward kiss. Oh, you said squirt kiss. Oh. Mm. Wow. Oh. How sweet. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs> oh, my God.